Last example, uh, number 5 here. We're asked to solve uh, x plus 3 over x plus 1 is greater than or equal to x minus 2 over x minus 3. And there's two restrictions here. Uh, negative 1 would make this factor 0, and positive 3 would make this factor 0. And if we place those numbers on a number line, negative 1 and 3, it divides the number line into three intervals. To the left of negative 1, between negative 1 and 3, and then to the right of 3. So there's three intervals here. So the first case I'm going to deal with is x is less than negative 1, and then between negative 1 and 3, and then to the right of 3. And so, um, similar to the other examples, I would multiply both sides by the product of the two denominators, so that in, on the left here, the x plus 1s would divide out, and on the right, the x minus 3s would divide out. Now, take a look at what sign did I multiply by when I multiplied by the two uh, x plus 1, x minus 3s. And if we're below negative 1, a number below negative 1 plus 1 is negative. So that's actually negative. But this factor is also negative. So think of a number below negative 1, like negative 5, for example. Negative 5 minus 3 would be negative 8. And so this factor is negative, and so is this one. And the product of two negatives is actually positive. So even though I multiply by two negatives, uh, I'm in the end multiplying by a positive. So you could think of, well, I multiplied by a negative, so the inequality changed. And then I multiplied by another negative, so it actually changed back. You could think about that, I suppose. But uh, really, the product of two negatives is positive. So in the, in the end, I just multiply by a positive, and the inequality will not change direction. So what I have on the left then is x minus 3 times x plus 3 and x minus 2 times x plus 1 on the right. Inequality is the same direction. So expanding out the left and the right, x minus 3 times x plus 3 is x squared minus 9. On the right, x times x is x squared. This product would be negative 2x, and this product would be 1x, so that adds to negative 1x. And negative 2 times 1 is negative 2. Now, notice that there's an x squared or 1x squared on each side, so uh, I could subtract x squared from both sides, and I won't have any x squared left in my solution at all. I'll then also add x to both sides. Most people like to have the variable on the left side. You don't have to, but uh, I will do that. So I'll add x to both sides, so that's why I have an x on the left here. And then bringing the constants over to the right, adding 9 to both sides, a negative 2 plus 9 is 7, so we get x is greater than 7. Now if we compare this to our case, if you look at the number line here, the case says that x is less than negative 1. So there's negative 1 there, and less than negative 1, of course, means we're going in this direction. This says x is, but x is greater than or equal to positive 7. So here's positive 7 here, and we're talking about numbers to the right of that. And, and notice that those two inequalities or intervals, sorry, have nothing in common whatsoever. They don't overlap at all. So we're always looking for where they overlap. And so, that's why there is no solution to this first case. There is no number that's greater than or equal to 7, but also less than negative 1. So no solution from that first case. Now we'll examine between negative 1 and positive 3. So I'd still multiply both sides by the product of x plus 1 and x minus 3. Now, between negative 1 and 3, think of a number between negative 1 and 3. For example, 0. 0 is between negative 1 and 3. If I put 0 in place of x, this expression is positive. 0 plus 1 would be 1. So that's positive. But this expression is negative. 0 minus 3 is negative 3. So in the end, we're actually multiplying by a negative, and that's why this inequality changes direction. So the x plus 1s and x minus 3s divide out. Now, all the algebra is the same. I'd still have x minus 3 times x plus 3 on the left and x minus 2 times x plus 1 on the right, x squared minus 9 on the left, x squared minus x minus 2 on the right. I still end up with an x on the left, a 7 on the right. The only difference is the inequalities in the, in the opposite direction. So this will still simplify to x is, in this case, less than or equal to 7. All the algebra parts the same. Now, if we compare x is less than or equal to 7, so here's 7, and less than or equal to, of course, is everything below that. And the case, the case says the numbers are between negative 1 and 3. So uh, negative 1, of course, is here to 3. And where do those overlap? Well, they overlap that interval between negative 1 and 3. 
So the solution would actually be uh, graphing on a number line numbers between negative 1 and 3, not inclusive. Okay, one last case. We're going to examine where x is greater than 3. So it still multiply both sides by, and I forgot to write my solution down here, still multiply both sides by x plus 1 times x minus 3. And so the x plus 1s and the x minus 3s divide out. And of course the algebra is still the same. Now if x is greater than 3, this factor is positive because a number bigger than 3 plus 1 is positive. And same over here. Greater than 3, um, 3 minus a number bigger than 3 minus 3 is still positive. So we multiply by positive. The inequality stays in the same direction and everything will be exactly the same as this part right here. So now we have to compare x is greater than 7. And we'll draw that in the number line x is greater than or equal to 7, so there's 7. Remember the solid dot means you include that number. And x is greater than 3, so greater than 3 of course, there's 3, and to the right. And where do they overlap? Well, they overlap in this interval here. So the solution would be 7 and numbers larger than 7. And so our solution is x is greater than or equal to 7. So in the end, the solution is numbers between negative 1 and 3 and also greater than or equal to 7. And that's the end of the lesson.